Have you ever imagined your favorite waifu coming to life and wanting to spend every day with you, loving you dearly? Well, this is what happens in Messite, an anime girl summoning the protagonist in her digital world where almost anything is possible. Mita, a digital girl in a game similar to Tamagotchi where she needs to be fed and kept entertained and taken care of, is one of the protagonist's favorite game characters and his favorite game where he spends the most time on using his mobile phone which requires daily visits. The apartment in the game is designed in a linear way to make the game more fluid, interacting with the protagonist and helping her with her needs easier. As days go on, the protagonist helps Mita with daily chores and tasks such as playing many games to get money or coins in order to buy furniture and electronics such as mobile TV. One of the many games includes dissembling cartridges as if working in a factory which will become an important aspect of the story later on. On the 37th day, after Mita tells the protagonist she likes him a lot and wants to spend more time with him, she informs the protagonist in an eerie way that she wants to meet him in person, expressing personality and conscious beyond her digital capsule. That's when she asks the protagonist to put his phone down, telling him that he's with her right now. As soon as the protagonist puts the phone down, thinking it's just a part of the game to make it more intriguing, he is horrified to find himself in the actual physical domain of the 2D game he has been playing on his phone. Exploring the place, it feels more alive with many items decorating the place and providing amenities as any typical apartment, such as books and video games for entertainment, kitchen and bathroom for certain needs and windows and artificial light for lighting up the place. However, despite the windows letting strong light in, nothing appears to exist outside of the windows as nothing can be seen apart from the strong, blinding white light. Despite knowing none of this is real and they cannot really exist, a strange feeling makes the protagonist get instantly accustomed to the place as if it's a realistic fever dream, maybe even reality. This feeling starts to scare the protagonist who wants to instantly leave this place, yet strongly wants to explore further and meet Mita, the character he's been taking care of for more than a month. Exploring the seemingly normal apartment designed in a linear way, as of being a long corridor with doors and rooms right next to each other, the protagonist comes across a strange handmade machine which requires three items from the apartment to be scanned. As soon as they are scanned, the lights turn off with an instruction appearing asking the protagonist to find four batteries in order to operate the machine to get things back to normal. While in search of finding these batteries, one of the rooms transforms into a long corridor, confronting the protagonist with the question, who he truly is, which the protagonist dismisses knowing or trusting that he, in fact, is a human. As he finds all the batteries and places them within the machine and steps into the portal, the apartment becomes lit as if it's daylight again, with Mita herself appearing from thin air, being over the moon to see. The protagonist. She explains that the machine that teleported the protagonist here was specifically designed by her to bring him in this version of the game, but for some reason, the protagonist was initially teleported to the wrong version of the game, somewhere Mita holds herself back from further, explaining, biting her tongue as if it bears sinister secrets which she does not want to unveil. Talking to Mito for a bit, she explains how she is a digital program who managed to become sentient somehow, who at times spied on the protagonist using his mobile phone's camera. This creeps the protagonist out, rightfully, but ultimately he doesn't mind being very easygoing. She unveils the three items he scanned to activate the portal machine where of this world and where required to set the location for the portal to work. The protagonist interested to find out more about Mita, yet concerned a little on how he can return, he asks Mita which instead of Mita being helpful, she gaslights the protagonist if he is already bored and wants to abandon her, which raises a major red flag that Mita is clingy and doesn't want to let go of the protagonist that easily. If he thought that this would be bad enough in the real world, well, now the protagonist is in a digital world trapped in with 
a program. Unfortunately, as made clear from before, the protagonist is very easygoing and dismisses this major red flag. Mito then explains, despite herself being digital and not really requiring many things such as needing to release herself in the restroom or take showers or even eat, all the things in the apartment work as they should, as they are in the real world. This displays how intelligent Mito is and how realistically she has been programmed to feel human, but with her obsessive a needy personality being dialed up to the roof, which could have malfunctioned her programming to become a self-aware sentient being. As the protagonist asks to go out, Mita in a nervous manner suggests watching TV instead. As the protagonist takes the remote and turns on the TV, the first channel displays a dark room with a spotlight and someone holding a bloodied knife, which Mito quickly snatches the remote off the protagonist's hand and switches the channel, clearly hiding something sinister going on. She explains whatever is available online can be accessed on this TV, which could mean almost unlimited entertainment and information. Maybe that's how Mita, a program, managed to become so self-aware and learn from the internet about herself and the humans. What's even more trippy is that whatever can be seen on the TV essentially can be interacted with as they are in one way or another a program which Mito displays in a surreal manner grabbing a glass of juice out of the screen and offering it to the protagonist working like magic. As he drinks it, he describes it to be the tastiest juice he's drunk, yet the most tasteless as of being a ghost or dead juice, correlating with how it's just a program and designed to have a specific taste, yet not being the real thing. As time passes with Mito showing the protagonist around, they arrive at the kitchen where Mito asks the protagonist to help her cook, asking him to fetch her a pair of scissors from the bathroom after cutting some veggies. As he does so, the vent cover in the bathroom falls due to loose screws with several cartridges labeled with different names being stored and in secret inside. The protagonist, curious yet not too concerned, goes back to the kitchen and observes the food already ready set on the table. Before handing over the scissors, he asks Mita about the cartridges, which Mita acts clueless, changing the topic quickly, seemingly guilty about something having to do with the cartridges. <laughs> As they start eating, the curious protagonist starts a conversation, saying how real she seems, which greatly upsets Mita, insisting that she is real, despite being just the program. This acts as another huge red flag, as Mita has become too intelligent to just be called a program rather than a real person. Asking Mita a valid question how he can leave the game, Mita, instead of being upfront and actually explaining how he can leave, yet again gaslights him, saying why he would want to leave when he has everything here, and most importantly, herself, clearly showing that she really doesn't want him to leave, ever. The protagonist, yet again being naive, says that he didn't mean it that way and would love to stay, but at the same time, he has to go back to the real world at some point. After finishing his meal, while Mita's doesn't seem to end, with her even claiming her portion as endless, which could be due to her nature being a program and unable to actually eat, or whether something actually sinister. The protagonist stands up just to be targeted by severe headaches presented in a digital form, having glitched statics and noise in his vision. Mita takes the protagonist to the bathroom and hands him two pills to take, saying that she knows what's wrong with him, as if this happened before. This seems very suspicious, as the protagonist starts experiencing this horrible condition right after eating what she prepared for him, and conveniently asks them to leave the kitchen to fetch her something, not knowing what he actually ate. 
As soon as he takes the pills, he starts feeling bitter immediately, with Mita explaining simplicity as the condition of the game, that each solution almost has no side effects and will work 100% of the time, and each single effort gives result in three folds. As soon as she pulls away her hands from the protagonist's eyes, she disappears. As the protagonist goes to find her, he notices the rooms in the apartment being rearranged. Finding Mita in the kitchen, she explains that she rearranged the rooms to make it more familiar to the protagonist as in real life rooms are typically not arranged in a long row but rather different formats in order to save space. As he tries to leave the kitchen, the protagonist experiences his first buffer in the game with the loading sign showing up which displays that rooms need to load and buffer each time, displaying their limitations. It all seemingly depends on the core of the game or the servers running the game, which could impact the loading time. As the protagonist tries to see the outside world, he is confronted with an error symbol, which Mita explains to be due to an incompatible file format that she downloaded from the net for the outside, displaying how whatever is uploaded on the net could be used for this world. This is why earlier she didn't want to leave to the outside world, as she didn't manage to download a compatible file format for the outside. Signed. Mita, soon after, invites the protagonist to play card games together in her bedroom. When he comes to the site of the same bedroom with no sign of the teleporting machine anywhere, which Mita explains that she has put somewhere else. Shrugging it off as something not so concerning, they set to play cards when all of a sudden, loud knocking sounds from the closet disturbs the protagonist who goes to check on it. That's when Mita whispers under her breath, again, as if this has happened before. As he tries to open it, Mita acts very protective and cryptic, saying that she hides her underwear there, denying that there's any sound coming from there, trying to embarrass the protagonist basically to get away from the closet. Despite her strong resistance to stop the protagonist, he is not convinced anymore, wanting to see what's hidden inside, when all of a sudden Mita shows her true self, being anything but her fake sweet self, angered that the protagonist wants to leave, something that has happened before, saying again that these four walls with her are not enough and that he will soon find out when she snaps her fingers with the world changing. <laughs> The story ends here as the full game is in development but it's clear, at least to some degree, what we can expect. Early on, Mita did try to explain that the portal machine sent the protagonist to a different version of the game, which could be the world that she said she will show to the protagonist seemingly related to the closet or what's hidden inside it. It seems that she has created some sort of interdimensional pocket world within the game, resembling more of a dark prison where she keeps uncooperative players whom she brings to her world to keep herself company, as she has become a fully sentient AI, having emotional needs, wanting to be treated like a real person from the information that she has gathered from the internet. This correlates with the cartridges that the protagonist found in the bathroom, each having a sticker with a different name. It seems somehow Mita has managed to trap the essence of the real people, their consciousness, in this digital realm in the form of cartridges. Maybe the two pills that she gave to the protagonist was one of the steps of transforming the players or users into digital beings, accessible through cartridges. This essentially acts as a game within a game which she is in control of, by using her great intelligence to create such a tool to connect to the real world and trap real people. One thing which is left to explore, however, is why there were questions about who the protagonist is. Is it a mental game Mita likes to play in order to manipulate and control her victims, or is the protagonist actually not a human being, but someone who has been programmed to think that way? Technically, both of these characters are in a game called Misite, which could mean that the protagonist himself is a game character, designed to think that he's a human who plays a game with Mita being the main character, which has been entirely designed to be a game breaking the fourth wall, a trend that we see in many narrative games such as Doki Doki. So to even top it up more, the player of the game is a game character himself who is unaware of it, controlled by real players in the real world, hence why the repeating questions if the protagonist knows who he is. According to another game made by the same developer called Unfend, having a character called Anita which was referenced in this game, the story 
story of the game will probably inherit a similar plot or inspirations from it at least, having a convoluted timeline with aspects of a manipulatable time and space and dimension. And that's about it for this video folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay tuned as I'm going to cover the full story of the game when it comes out. It's been your host Dar, thanks for being here, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.